The top stories, IGAD calls on lawmakers to allocate funds to combat terrorism and extremism in East Africa. And AFCFTA said to need cooperation of political, business leaders and social change makers. Hello and welcome to EBC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism with the latest news highlights of the hour. I am Tabitha John to stay with us. level delegation is participating in the 13th World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference, which is taking place in Abu Dhabi, UAE, from 26th to 29th February. The Ethiopian delegation to the conference includes Trade and Regional Integration Minister and Chief Negotiator for Ethiopia's accession to the World Trade Organization, Gabramas Galchala, Foreign Affairs State Minister, Ms. Gano Araga, and Finance State Minister, Yob Takaling. The opening session of the conference has taken place, followed by a ceremony to mark the sessions of Comoros and Timor-Leste and a ceremony for acceptances of the fisheries subsidies agreement. Two ministerial conversations will be held on trade and sustainable development, including trade and industrial policy and policy space for industrial development and on trade and inclusion. Jala stated on Sunday that Ethiopia is working aggressively to finalize its accession to World Trade Organization. The fifth ministerial forum on migration kicked off in Addis Ababa. The forum stressed the need for harnessing labor migration policies critical to create a safe human labor migration pathway for young people in the East and Horn of Africa region. Labor and Skills State Minister Daniel Teresa and Abibatu Wanefol, IOM Ethiopia Chief of Mission, including representatives from the African Union, presided in the regional forum. The forum is thoroughly discussing the greater strategy for safe, regular and human labor migration pathways for young people in the region, according to Enam. Out of an estimated 170 million people in Eastern Horn of Africa, nearly 60 million are young people between the ages of 15 and 24 years old, it was indicated.
African people need to independently communicate to the world about the events on the continent through the lens of their values, members of the African Union media fellows told DBC. They also stated that the African media have to be more proactive to tell progressive stories and sell Africa's vision better than focus on the challenges. The journalists called on African media and journalists to tell the African narrative and the progress in various aspects of the continent. Jerusalem Betzha has this report. 2022, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed called on Africans to share its narratives and combat misleading stereotypes through continent-level media house. I would like to propose to this August body the establishment of an African Union Continental Media House. This media house could be organized to provide authoritative news and information on our continent, fight disinformation, promote our collective agenda, and offer up opportunities for Pan-African voice to be heard. Talking to EBC World, the African Media Fellows also highlighted that African people need to independently communicate to the world to change the image of the continent and be a voice for African agendas. We need it. We have to tell our own African story. We have the African Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, but nobody is going to tell the story because the story that the other people are going to say is only one-sided. Africa was fighting, hunger and other things, but we have to tell like this positive development. It's only we Africans can tell. And the Ethiopian um, people having this, you know, important, you know, broadcaster for all Africans to be telling our story is the step in the right direction. And coordinator of AU Media Fellows stated that African Union and member states should be working actively to realize for the establishment of an African Union-led media outlet. We believe that uh, facilities such as this are the beginnings of the makings of a continent that has capacity at African Union level but also at member states level to tell the African story. So the broadcasting station that you are talking about indeed was um, advocated for by the African Union and slowly, slowly we are making progress towards that. The African Media Fellows also called on African journalists to be more proactive to tell progressive stories and sell Africa's vision better than the focus challenges. We need uh, African journalists to work on their own story. You know, all of us journalists have a responsibility, you know, government, civil society, you know, con policy makers to come together and be telling our stories. We have a lot of uh, common. Since I came to Ethiopia, I've seen a lot of cultural similarity with my own culture in Gambia, West Africa. I mean, that's something that, you know, we can sell. You know, that we have our culture, we have our values that we can sell and share with humanity. The establishment of the African Union Continental Media House will bring about the unification of the media on the continent as it will be used as the channel to tell a common story about the African continent. African journalists will come together to demystify the negative narrative the Western media has continued to portray about the African continent by telling unique and genuine stories that relate to the peoples of Africa, they noted. The Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, called legislators across East Africa and the Horn to allocate sufficient resources towards the prevention and counteraction of terrorism and extremism. Director of the IGAD Center of Excellence, Simon Yambura, reiterated that member states need to collaborate closely and exchange information to combat violence and terrorism effectively. Goshu Meliso has more. Terrorism and extremism bring about significant challenges in the East Africa region. In response to the formidable challenges posed by terrorism and extremism in East Africa, IGAD convened a high-level regional meeting with legislators from Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, South Sudan and Uganda. Director of IGAD Center of Excellence urged legislators across East Africa and the Horn to allocate sufficient resources towards the prevention and counteraction of terrorism and extremism. Members of Parliament, really deliberately allocate enough resources so that these agencies are able to fight this. But also allocate resources to programs that help deal with issues of poverty, allocate resources with issues that will help us deal with unemployment. We have so many, in all our member states, we have many youths who are unemployed. We have to come with programs that ensure that we provide opportunities to the young people. 
Otherwise, the young people would be frustrated. And that job is the job of members of parliament. But more importantly also is that these resources also need to go to the people. Because one of the, some of the drivers of violent extremism and terrorism are poverty, lack of education, uh, lack of employment. The director stressed the importance of gender inclusion in tackling violence and extremism, urging legislators to prioritize it for enhanced effectiveness. The gender role in uh, violent extremism and terrorism. And therefore, we are asking the members of parliament to ensure that the rules and laws and policies that are put in place are gender sensitive that they are able to look at us, all of us, as human beings, without discriminating either it's man or woman, but all of us as human beings, and ensuring that we have a gender-sensitive legal framework. Simon also reiterated member states to collaborate closely and exchange information to combat violence and terrorism but, effectively. Um, for us to be a safe region, is one most important thing is we must share information. We must share information. Information is critical. Information is power. So we must share information where we see threat, where we see, we see any terrorist. We must share information. For us, we are encouraging the region to share information. But more importantly, also to share experiences. What experiences can Ethiopia share with Kenya, with Somalia, with Sudan, with Uganda? Sharing those experiences is very important for us. Legislators drawn from member states launched parliamentary caucus network in fight against violence and extremism. The acceleration of achievements of objectives of the AFCFTA can be achieved by bringing together political and business leaders and also social change makers together. Directorate Haid at the African Prosperity Network organizers of African Dialogue, Prince Moses Ofori Atta made the remark while talking to EBC World. The AFCFTA agreement was adopted and opened for signature on 21st March 2018 in Kigali and entered into force on 30th May 2019. This has the following details. The 12th Extraordinary Summit of the African Union, which was held in Miami on 7th of July 2019, was a momentous occasion for Africa as it saw the successful launching of the operational phase of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFT. The AFCFT agreement was adopted and opened for signature on 10 to 1 March of 2018 in Kigali and entered into force on 30 May 2019. Approached by ABC Communications Directorate Head at African Prosperity Network, organizers of African Dialogue, Prince Moses of Fury Ate reiterated that the acceleration of objectives of the FCFT can be achieved by bringing together political and business leaders and also social change makers. I truly do believe that there are ways of achieving the objectives of the AFCFTA by bringing um, political leaders, by bringing business leaders and social change makers together into the same room, room to discuss on how to make the Africa um, single market agenda work. And this is exactly what we did at the Africa Prosperity um, Dialogues, which looks at actionable um, policies and bankable projects. And interoperability speaks to this narrative. He further stressed that colonial era commercial arrangements need to be revisited by coming together in unison. The, the opportunities are many. They outweigh the challenges, seriously. Um, right now, what we're seeing is um, we're operating across Africa with what we call the colonial era commercial arrangements, where we extract what is in our ground and we export them for very little money and then we import these same things for so much more money. And so it's not sustainable. And for that matter, we have to revisit these colonial era commercial arrangements. And it's by coming together that we can have this work. The communications head also indicated that restructuring economic arrangements fit for easy travel routes is another way to accelerate AFCFT. Look at um, if you have to, well, before Ethiopian Airlines and Ethiopian Airlines is doing an incredible job. But still, let's say you're moving from Algiers to Zimbabwe. You'd have to go to the colonial master's um, hub to travel to another colonial master's hub to travel 
to Zimbabwe, and it doesn't work. So we have to look at how we restructure our economic priorities by coming together. And trust me, once we do that, the monies will stay on the continent and we will prosper. That's not the only argument we give. We also know that um, between 80 and 85 percent of Africa's GDP is um, from, uh, as, as a result of um, activities in the small and medium sized enterprise sector. And this is mostly run by women. And so it's high time to bring women around the table to be part of a discussion as well. He also reiterated that AFCFT is an incredible tool for making the single market work, which multiple discussions have been held between trade experts to ensure that every country benefits. A reminder of the top stories. IGAD calls on lawmakers to allocate funds to combat terrorism and extremism in East Africa. And AFCFTA said to need cooperation for political, business leaders and social change makers. That's all we had for now. I'm Tabitha John. Goodbye for now.